Welcome to our virtual learning New Farm Academy series. In this video, I will be discussing best advice on the use of pre-harvest glyphosate. My name is Ian Allen. I am the Agronomy Manager for Scotland. So what are the benefits of using pre-harvest glyphosate? The most obvious benefit is that it aids up harvesting by evening up crops. Applications of glyphosate pre-harvest may well result in speeding up combining by increasing combining throughput. It reduces your drying costs and it is a great opportunity to control weeds such as volunteer potatoes, couch grass or broadleaf weeds. And it is also a fantastic opportunity to clean up the stubble for the following crop. For crops that are for crops of oxidrate that are being subsoiled, it is almost essential. What, what considerations should be taken into account before any application? You must check your grain contracts to make sure that your buyer permits the use of glyphosate. We must follow best practice for maximum efficiency and to reduce drift. Drift reduction is critical when, when neighbouring susceptible crops, such as potatoes. Applications of glyphosate as a harvest aid should only be applied when the grain moisture is below 30% and only target weeds that are still green and healthy and actively growing. So what, are, what timing should you look out for before any application? Glyphosate should only be applied when the grain moisture is below 30%. This is growth stage 87, or the hard dough stage, which is roughly three weeks before harvest. The following tests can be used to estimate if the grain moisture is below 30%. The first test that I will discuss is the peduncle test. This is only relevant to wheat and barley, and this is when the peduncle, if you look at the diagrams below, you will see a picture of both of them in wheat and barley. And the peduncle is situated above the stalk and just below the ear and has changed colour from green to brown. The next test that I would like to discuss is the thumbnail test. This is relevant for wheat, barley and oats. And this will be the most popular test used by most agronomists. This is when a thumbnail indentation holds in 20 grains gathered from various areas within the field. And the samples are taken from the centre of the ear. What you do is you hold the grain between your forefinger and your thumb. You use your thumbnail to indent the grain. If that indentation stays and doesn't pop out, you know your grain moisture is below 30%. Another test is the split grain test, but this is only relevant to wheat, and this is when the grains are cut in half. If 75% have a dark pigment strand in the crease, the grains have reached 30% moisture. If all the grains are stained, then the moisture content is below 30%. As for any agrochemical application, there are harvest intervals, and the statutory harvest interval is seven days. For many crops, such as wheat, this may take longer, often up to 14 days to achieve, achieve the full benefit of glyphosate. Longer intervals may be required when weather conditions are dull and overcast and when controlling broadleaf weeds, such as volunteer potatoes. Cereal pre-harvest glyphosate rate of use. The rates I will discuss are, is for a 540 gram formulation. Well, a product such as Rattler. If you're looking just for harvest aid, one litre per hectare of a product like Rattler will be su sufficient. If you're in a scenario though, where you're trying to achieve harvest aid and to control some annual broadleaf weeds, a rate of 1.5 litres. If you're in a situation where you have harvest aid and moderate couch grass control, you will need a rate of two litres. 
But if you're in a situation with high couch grass population or volunteer potatoes, then you will need the full label rate of 2.67 litres per hectare. So what considerations are, are there to, take, to be taken into account? Always check your contracts that glyphosate is permitted by the grain merchant. Sea crops must never be treated with glyphosate, as, the, as an application of glyphosate may affect germination. Do not use glyphosate treated straw as a horticultural mulch, and treated, but treated straw may be used for animal feed or bedding. And it is critical that we minimise spray drift, especially when neighbouring sensitive crops. I hope you've enjoyed this video and please look out, look out for more virtual learning content from New Farm. Thank you.